Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing. If you can hear my voice, please type in yes in the um, chat Kathy box or um, in the question box. Okay, thank you so much, Connie. Um, let me just give me one second um, and Mikkel to get um, my ducks in order. I just need to, I'm just trying to get out an email. Um, so just give me one more second and I should be done with that. Um, <clears throat> and then you will get my undivided attention. Um, okay, so I would like to welcome everyone to um, our Monday game plan webinar. Um, for those of you who are new, every single Monday we take a look at, you know, kind of what's going on on the economic calendar, and we also use that information to try to get make a sense of what um, we can expect in the week ahead. Um, we had a great trading um, session today and last night, 140 whopping pips. 100 pips in um, zero cat uh, the day trade signals the dollar cat smooth 40 trade hit target now this is all um me taking profits far too early if you held on to your dollar aussie yen those would have gone to full target but you know i, I didn't want to be greedy i wanted to start the week strong on a good note on a positive note so that um you know we can have the 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 confidence and the um you know good juju on our side for the most part we should be trading every day this week friday i have to think about we've got u.s retail sales u.s retail sales is a really big release uh, particularly since it's december and that's when we had the virus restrictions um but also you know holiday spending so it's really kind of tough to call so depending upon where we are at we may not trade um on friday um but you know we will have to see but for the most part you know we are um you know good to go for the rest of the week and we'll just see how things are on friday or maybe we'll get a thursday evening trade for asia uh, which will be friday morning in asia and then we'll just cut it off we'll have to see but regardless um the biggest event risk this week um, aside from, you know, what's happening in Washington, which I don't think is really going to tr transpire into anything that's going to have a dramatic impact in the markets. Boris may feel differently, but for the most part, I think um, it is U.S. retail sales on Friday that is going to be the big release of the, um, of the week. Now, we didn't have too much um, in the way of economic data and overnight. And actually the data that we had kind of threw me off a bit, which is why um, we got out of Aussie yen because Australian data, you know, I've been trying to sell Aussie dollar, Aussie yen, both of which yield us, us profits. But, um, you know, data was good. Australian inflation gauge was good. Retail sales was good. Chinese inflation data is good. So fundamentals was not on site, which is why I kind of wussed out. But both um, from a zip picture, from a technical picture, from a sentiment picture in the form of stocks, you know, down 300 points, all looked really good. Um, let's take a look first at the heat map and talk a little bit about that. And I, did, I forgot to post it in the chat, Kathy, room, which um, I will do later when Boris is talking. But um, the US dollar is up against all of the major currencies today. It is, um, you know, it is, it is up against um, all of the major currencies, primarily because of flight to quality, safe haven bid. There's a little bit about um, the reduction in U.S. political risk in the sense that, you know, the Georgia runoff has been resolved, um, the electoral college uncertainty has been resolved, so maybe investors are slightly relieved by that. But I think it's mostly risk aversion, um, you know, because. U.S. data and non-farm payrolls wasn't great, although earnings was very strong. Um, but for the most part, you know, a lot of things um, 
uh, are more negative, I think, than positive for dollar, but it is more risk appetite than anything else that is driving the um, that is driving the dollar higher. Um, the dollar is caught a safe haven bid. There are some worries that um, you know with the blue sweep um, policies by Biden will pass easier, and that could lead to more spending, more um, inflation, you know, various things like that. That you know, in the near term could be more dollar negative, but in the long term, you know, that's not always the case. Um, anyway, you know, concern, regardless, concerns about Biden needing to raise taxes and so forth in order to fund, um, in order to fund, in order to fund, um, you know, some of the spending plans he has is more dollar, is more um, negative for stocks than anything else. And so that could be catalyzing the sell-off uh, in Dow futures this morning. Um, I'm bearish euros, I'm bearish pounds, even though it seems like virus cases have tempered a little bit in um, in uh, the eurozone and as you know kind of the lockdown measures work, Germany is engaging in its um, strictest or actually just started its strictest um, lockdown today. And they've cut um, the number of um, people allowed to mix together. Um, they've they've uh, basically you know kind of reduced that from you know to to um, you know just one household. Um, they've limited travel and they um, you know basically they banned non-essential travel for all residents. Um, and they're getting serious about it. And, you know, Chancellor Merkel said, you know, they're they're entering, you know, a very, very difficult period. And these new um, restrictions is going to add to the pain in um, Germany, the largest economy. Now, for, for the most part, markets have often shrugged off, you know, these surges in viruses. Um, and focused on the rollout of um, the rollout of you know the vaccine, but you know maybe you know on this day where when, on this day where new restrictions are being announced, they can no longer ignore it. UK has got their same you know troubles. Um, you know they've got they're the hot uh, hot sprout ground zero for the new um, the the new more contagious version. Um, of the virus, and you know it's it's you know it's a serious deal, and I think that data will start should start to show these um, ramifications, and more importantly, um, I don't think investors can really ignore it for much longer. And while well, we've got a little bit of risk aversion, like today, maybe that's going to filter into everything else. So bearish euros, bearish pounds, neutral Aussies, because as I said, the Australian data was good. Um, but you know, Aussie and Kiwi are risk currencies, and that's why you know Kiwi's down the sorry, Aussie's down the most today, followed by Kiwi. Even though they are in recovery mode, they have very little to worry about um, in regards to um, you know uh, surges in, in virus cases. Um, but they're succumbing to risk aversion, and that's why those the Aussies, the short Aussie trade, work for us. I'm bearish CAD in contrast to Aussie Kiwi. Data from Canada has not been good. Um, they've also been um, kind of wrapped up in new virus restrictions, and um, yeah, it, it's it's problematic for for Canada. Um, and I think you know with um, labor market data weakening, with IVPMI um, uh, dropping, that you know we sold the Canadian dollar, bought dollar CAD last night, doubled up the position in um, or went on a full position in in our uh, channel zero Kathy trade signals and it worked out very well for us all around. It was a very clear trade. Um, Swiss franc yen bullish simply because stocks are starting to fall and I think um, we should see more of, of that effect. So taking a look at the economic talent, I already talked about how um, the Australian data and the Chinese data was good um, but that seems to have um, caused the market to shrug um, that off, doesn't seem to 
care about it um, all that much. And today we have um, inflation expectations. We have nothing really from the U.S. at all. Um, just speech from Bostic, Kaplan. So it's a very quiet day in terms of data. And so whatever's happening right now will probably continue. And the focus, at least today, is, is going to be on political headlines. Um, not tomorrow. We're going to look at this next seven days. The next seven days um, on Tuesday, we've got Red Book Survey. Still not much from the U.S. IBD Economic Optimism probably going to be weaker. We'll have to see. Um, and then on Wednesday, we uh, one thing for the Eurozone is that we have ECB President Lagarde speaking a few times. And um, her you know, speaking a few times, I think, is going to have quite a bit of an effect on um, Euro. And I think, if anything, you know, she's going to um, express more concerns than anything else. And so you know, that could hurt the Euro a bit. Eurozone industrial production numbers is expected to be um, a little weaker. U.S. has inflation data. On um, Wednesday, we get the consumer price release. We did have a sharp increase in gas prices in the month of December. Um, so I think you know um, those inflation numbers could tick up, and they are expected to tick up. And then um, the beige book expected more Fed speak. Um, you know, some ancillary data and like um, New Zealand, Australian building permits, not huge market movers. Chinese trade could be quite interesting, but China's been doing quite well. And I think that data will continue to show that. On Thursday, um, nothing really um, from Asia, aside from what we talked about. ECB has its minutes, probably going to remain dovish. U.S. only has jobless claims. We do have Powell speaking, um, so that will be very interesting for Thursday. And then the, the big day is Friday. Friday, we've got UK industrial production numbers. We've got trade balance numbers, monthly GDP. The industrial production numbers could be better because the PMIs are better, but GDP could end up being a little softer. And then, of course, from the US, the big releases we have from the US is US retail sales. And the market is looking for flat retail sales growth, which would be better from the previous month. Um, and then the Empire State Survey, which they're looking for improvement. It's hard for me to imagine these data points will be good, but that's what the market's looking for. And I guess that's what we have to respect. I don't know, but um, that's why I'm kind of reluctant to trade that day. University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment same Survey, same story. Um, you know, virus raging across the nation, you know, political uncertainty, at least, you know, when this was taken. But, you know, the vaccine's being rolled out. So it'll be interesting to see what the mar and markets hit record highs. So it'll be interesting to see what the market cares about more. Um, and because it's unclear, it may be best to stay out. Uh, let me just get rid of my little turn signal here. Let's look at the charts. Euro dollar rolling over. I think that it could pull back some more to the 50 estimate at 120.30. Dollar very strong rallying. I don't think it deserves this rally, but it is rallying. So we'll let it do its thing and the uptrend is intact. Pound dollar I think should be trading much lower, um, at least down to this low here at 133.55. Dollar Swiss rallying, I think it should get higher. Kiwi dollar probably moving lower as well, although not as much room to fall as Euro and pound. Aussie also rolling over, I'm bearish both currencies on a technical basis. And very bullish dollar CAD, which looks like it wants to squeeze up to 129. All right, so now I'd like to open up the floor to any questions you may have or charts that you may want to look at. Any questions or charts you may want to look at? Okay, let me see. Someone's typing in the chat. Kathy Room, Euro Yen. Good question. So I'm bearish Euro Yen. You know, we were in that trade. We exited that trade right above the 20 SMA. Weekly charts look kind of bearish to me. Daily charts look bearish to me. Four hour charts also had support, which is why I, you know, we should have exited that early. Um, it's not looking as good as the other ones. I think CAD Yen looks better. I think Aussie Yen clearly working out better. 
even Kiwi Yen, um, and maybe even Swiss Yen. While technically, I'm sorry, while fundamentally I like the Euro Yen short trade, I think that it's probably the weakest on a technical basis. Any other questions? Pound yen, yeah, pound yen. Pound yen, I actually think has more room to fall. Um, you know, this is more of a bearish formation, I think, on the daily chart. I'm super, super bearish pound yen. I think that if you've got wide stops and you're willing to hold it against the 200 week SMA, which is far away, but not too far, it's about 150 pips. It could be a good bet. Maybe even, yeah, I mean, I think even maybe even just a 140, um, 140, 175. Um, but yes, I'm, I'm kind of bearish both. Any other questions? Okay, hey guys, how's everybody doing? Um, I will take over, Kay, thank you very much. Go ahead. Let me see if I can take my screen, show my screen we wanna go to, no, 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 I wanna go to, this one, this one, okay. Hey, 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 how's everybody doing? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, so I'm not gonna do tech support right now, obviously, we're in a we're in a uh, webinar. Uh, uh, Valtteri, I have no idea uh, what what's going on with, the, with your window. Um, I wanna make sure that basically, and, and I'm actually, I'm gonna make this a lot easier for everybody. I'm gonna create videos this week. I'm, I'm, my, my internal actually, I, I, this seems to be such a problem right now for everybody that, oh, not for everybody, but for a for few, few people who are just kind of lost with all the software that we have available for you, that I'm really going to try to make create the videos by Wednesday the latest. Exactly, exactly what you need to do. And um, you need to follow my videos. And only if you follow my videos 100% and it still is not working, then you can come back to me on tech support, okay? Because um, uh, there's just there are 500 people in the room, and I can't uh, I can't spend um, individual time on stuff as you know, assuming you follow the rules. Now it's perfectly okay if you follow the rules and there's still problems there. Then certainly I'll be happy happy to help you. But it's just inefficient. Um, and this is a this is sort of a rule I'm going to institute going forward, which is that I'm happy to help anybody after you actually do what I tell you to do um, on the videos. So I will make it easier for you. I'll make it super, super uh, clear. Step one, step two, step three, exactly how to lay down and use every single indicator, where it's supposed to go, how it's supposed to trade, and what it's supposed to do. Um, and you just follow that by video. It'll make your life easier and my life easier. So that's my response to anybody who's gonna ask me for tech support for the next 48 hours. Um, just wait, um, and, and I'll give you I'll give you all the uh, the tech support I can. Um, the tools should all be working fine. Um, okay. In the meantime, so lots of new interesting stuff getting developed for our strategy, and um, um, and I'm and I'm beta testing it. So that's the reason why I haven't um, I haven't quite fully released it, but. The latest version. So let me just kind of show you. Let's go. Let's go to full screen on this. I just want to show you. We're not gonna. We're not gonna do trade setups today for at least, uh, um, you know, 20, 30 minutes. And I, I mean, I, I may not even do any trades with you guys today, just because there is, um, the, you know, there's just so much software updates and, and upgrades, and I kind of want to get everybody um, synchronized. I'm happy. To, I'm, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna talk everybody in the room. Usually on Monday, there's a lot of new people who don't even understand how we trade. So I really want to talk about strategy. And structure. So today, I really want to do all those things with you guys, and not uh, get bogged down in in every five point trade that we make. So we'll just, you know, we, we may just simply take a take a, a break today from day trading just to kind of review where we're at. But I want to show you the very, very interesting, uh, very valuable advances that we're making in the um, in the arrow trader um, indicator 
that I think are going to make life just even that much more profitable for us. So in the um, uh, in the latest beta version that, that Daniel made for me, right? What we have, what we have, is the ability to analyze trend up, trend down, higher highs, higher lows. In other words, not just to buy sell signals on continuity basis with the arrows, but but what kind of a trend is it? Is it a is it an uptrend with a higher high? Is it an uptrend with a lower high? Is it a downtrend with a lower low? Is it a downtrend with a lower low? Right, which is great, and that's working fine on my on my. Uh, currency stuff and, and 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 you know all good, but I realized as we constructed this that the truly ultimate value from an analytical point of view for us is going to be able to compress all of these eight eight alerts into four into four. So what what ultimately is going to happen? That's what that's what we're going to be working on next, and when it's ready, then I will release it. What's going to happen is the following. So every time we have an arrow alert. Let's say here's an arrow alert, right? What it's going to say to you audially with, with, an, with an audible is, uh, in this case, NASDAQ, you know, uh, buy reversal arrow in a lower low downtrend. Because what I realized is we the way we're trading now, which is which is what makes it so profitable. This was this was a trade that I just did, obviously, just a little bit before the uh, um, uh, the webinar. Is we have the reference point within context, and once we have a reference point within context, we know exactly what to do. We know that if it's that if it's a buy arrow um, within a lower in a, in a downtrend with a lower low, meaning that this is a um, clear downtrend, we want to just sell sell the lows that I buy. And selling the lows that I buy was just you know super easy. I was actually, you know, hundreds of points more than what I took from it, but that's that, that's neither here nor there. The point being is that the signal was really, really good. So the whole idea is to get the uh, robot, to get the indicator, to completely contextualize the signal so that we don't have to go back. and Because what I was realizing is that even though it's giving me a signal, I have to go back and see, oh, where's the trend? How's the trend working? Was, you know, because originally it was just telling me where I'm in trend, then, it's, then, it, then five, seven minutes later it tells me the arrow, and I have to go back and check before. All of that is tedious and also is just ripe for error because you, uh, you, you know, you'd have to kind of – sometimes it's easy, obviously, to eyeball. This is clearly a downtrend uh, crossover, right? So this crossover is much higher. To the downside in this crossover so it's clearly a downtrend crossover so it's a clear downtrend trade it's super super easy to take it boot and so on and so forth but sometimes it's not it's not even that clear the, to the machine it's obvious the machine is is accurate to um you know a tenth of a pip so the what we're going to get is we're going to get this audible it's going to say you know buy you know buy arrow reversal buy arrow in in, in in a downtrend with lower lows right something like that or may, maybe maybe i'll make it less uh um <laughs> less cumbersome maybe I, I maybe i'll make an audible it's a little bit more contextual but I, you know i could say uh we could say um um you know something to the effect of legitimate downtrend reversal buy arrow you know uh uh you know uh something like that and then we could say illegitimate downtrend reversal buy arrow right uh, something is something that to that effect. And if it's if it's legitimate, then we take the sell signal. If it's illegitimate, then we're actually looking for the reversal signal. We're just looking for the reversal signal. And you know, something something to that effect. Because obviously once once we have the once we have the logic code, we can make the the thing say anything we want. And we can you know, we can agree on, on what the final thing. But that's going to be uh, Connie and everybody's saying it's gonna make life much easier. It's absolutely gonna make life much easier. It's absolutely absolutely gonna make life much easier for us. And that's but you know. To get to that point, it was I think I'm, the, the great thing that I, that I did with Daniel here is that we did it one step at a time, and the beauty of that approach is while it's a little bit slow and cumbersome, is that you see what needs to be done next much cleaner and clearer. You know, I don't think I would have able would have been able to arrive at this at this conclusion so fast if I had just simply said, oh, just, you know, let's just let's just make it all all at once. So sequent, you know, working on this sequentially, it's taking a little time. The ultimate uh, product is going to be super interesting because not only will it be, you know, a great indicator, but it'll be an analytical indicator. It'll be an indicator that will allow us to contextualize the trade right away. Once we know if it's a legitimate trend or illegitimate trend, 
the trading becomes super easy. Once we know that that this is a legitimate downtrend, look at this is such a freaking easy sell. It's not even, you know, this sell was worth like 50 points over here. And you and you know, you could have easily, of course, combined it with, with a fundamental view. Uh, it was clear today that things were going to get sold hard. But even if you didn't have to combine the fundamental view, you could have, you know, you could have easily done it. Um, and then, you know, if you go backwards on the chart here, uh, sorry, let me come back here. You know, you go backwards on the chart to the, to the European Open, right? Um, so, uh, you know, in this case, what was this? So we had a... Uh, 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 so in this case, you know, when things were actually looking a lot better for NASDAQ earlier in the, you know, earlier in the morning, you, you, you know, your, your trend um, uh, ideas were all working. So in this case, this is a break to the upside. This is a higher, higher, uh, you know, break to the upside. So this is a, you know, buy continuation arrow. We take this signal over here, although I'm, yeah, I think I'm not sure how, how big this, this, uh, oh yeah, this was super, this was super, um, super long i don't you know I, this the volatility filter would have would have would have killed us uh, we wouldn't no would have, would have simply negated this trade right they wouldn't have, wouldn't, have, wouldn't have taken it but you know here's another interesting idea so so here's a um downtrend right and it is effectively an illegitimate downtrend right so let's say it's an illegitimate downtrend in a sense that um that it is a higher low right so here's a downtrend it's an illegitimate trend. So that means we're not looking to, for, for sell ideas, we're looking for buy ideas. Now, now the interesting thing here is that you would have ignored all of these because these are not, you know, within our, within our context, illegitimate sell ideas. You would have taken this and that would have been a super easy, clean trade. Even though the overall trend, the overall trend is kind of starting to get negative on a day, the micro trend, which is all we care about, because we're now trading, we're just trading the one minute chart, the micro trend, actually is positive, right? And you know, and it totally worked, right? There was a trade here. This was an interesting trade. This is an interesting trade because I really doubted myself. And it was just I was just laughing at like, like you know my own doubt because because the 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 uh, the structure totally totally worked. Um so this was this was a really really interesting trade. So here we you know we had a downtrend, we have an uptrend. Now this is an illegitimate uptrend. Illegitimate uptrend in a sense that the cross to the upside was much higher over here. So now this becomes a lower cross. It's, a, it's not a true uptrend, right? Not a true uptrend, which means what we're looking for is to sell, uh, is to fade or is to sell sells or sell buys, sell reversal buys. So in this case, we have a reversal sell, right? I sell over here and I'm like, oh man, this looks like it was an uptrend. It's gonna take, you know, it goes six, seven points against me. I'm like, there's no way this is gonna work. And then boom, sure enough, sure enough, totally takes me into profit um, on the next trade, right? And then eventually, you know, the market just starts to really crack down uh, and move, move along. The point being is that this analytical framework, which tells you what's a true, you know, what's a true trend, what's a false trend, and how to trade the true trend, and how to trade the false trend in our structure is super, super valuable. And now with the, um, with the indicator, we're going to be able to, um, you know, to, to have the audible calls so much you know so much better than um than before like for example here let me see if i can bring this up here um for example one of the interesting things that that was happening i didn't get a chance to take this trade but um you know but look, i kind of wish i did um where was this oh over here so so this was a this is a uh, what did i see sorry when i see this this was a sell lower sell uh what was the reversal here uh no i take it I, I take it back i'm sorry there was no there was what i think there was a good there was no trades here this this was all legitimate cells none of them got triggered by the way because the uh because all these these all these cells um started to reverse but then here's the here's the buy Right, the, this buy is an illegitimate buy, meaning that, that the, 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 the prior buy was higher, so therefore it's a false buy, it's a false buy. Maybe that's what I should say, false buy, true buy. That's probably gonna be the much easier way of, of, uh, of defining it. So if this is a false buy, what we're gonna do is wanna sell 
the arrow. The arrow is over here. We sell this, um, this, you know, the level over here at around 69. And of course, on a, um, uh, you know, on, on a one-minute chart, all I'm going for is five points. Super easy, five points, right? You know, right then and there. Um, and you know, just just banks it completely, right? And that's what that's what makes this, so, you know, such an interesting um, and valuable uh, structure is that we can, uh, you know, we, we can analyze it. Um, and trade positionally against it, um, in, you know, in a proper way, right? Uh, I'm getting I'm getting all sorts of uh, uh, notifications here. So um, what's going on here? Euro. Oh, euro trend up. So this is this this. Is a, but see, in in the new version, it's going to say euro euro trend up false um, because this is a false uptrend, meaning a sense that it's coming from a lower uh, lower high. And therefore, gives us an opportunity here if we get if we get a um, reference point with our arrows to actually short this trend, right? So if the trend is true, then we want to go with the trend. If the trend is false, we want to go against the trend uh, and trade it out. Um, Dow, Dow, pretty pretty false trend right now, right? It's a false trend because because it's coming from a much lo much lower level. So if we get a sell signal and then that sell signal is confirmed by price action. We want to take that that sell signal and trade it. Um, so that's what I wanted to tell you. We'll take a look. You know, maybe we'll we'll trade just a little bit here, um, as far as everybody goes. And uh, um, you know, where are we? Oh, it's 9:30, so it's, it's opening up now. I'm actually super interested in, in, in seeing how the, how the open goes here, because obviously they you know they're just doing the usual ramp. Look at Nasdaq is, isn't he can't even ramp it up. Nasdaq can't even get it up here. Um, I'm surprised. Uh, the Dow is 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 clearly, you know, ramping up, but it's ramping up off of a false uptrend. So if we get a sell sell arrow here, we want to definitely want to trade that to the downside um, and see how it goes. Um, what else is going on here? Uh, Euro, cable. Oh, cable. I want to take this trade. I was I was I was actually eyeing this trade. I'm sorry. I'm a little bit late here. Damn, I'm a little bit late. So, so that trade is already done. I'm not chasing it because this trade was the buy over here at the 70. See this this trade. This was a this was a true um, uptrend, right? Because up uptrend over here, uptrend over here, higher higher low. We should have taken this trade over here. Should have taken this buy over here at the 76. I'm just, just a little bit late, and that would have been a clean um, clean move towards the 84s. Nice, uh, nice five, ten points here. NAS is looking very negative. Where's my Dow? Is the Dow going to fail? Dow's not failing. Okay, so we, so far we got nothing on a Dow. Um, Nat, NAS is super deeply oversold, and it's making fresh lows, right? So this isn't the. I mean, you know, if we just want to fool around, let's play this. Uh, I'm just going to short this just for fun, uh, because because it's making fresh lows, and that was you know that was such a, that was such an obvious trade. Um, but it's not it's not a trade that we uh, that we generally practice um, and you know not not a trade that I want to do but like um, so it just you know created a continuation sell for us but this is very very deep in the uh, uh, in, in the over trade trade uh, over sell trade I was just you know fooling around here it was just an obvious trade here um, the other thing, good thing about this is that the more you now, when you sort of orient yourself in trend, in structure, um, you could start to see trades that are not, not even that are not even arrow based trades, where there is a reasonable chance there's there's a high degree of confidence that they're going to work because they're within the structure of what we're doing, which is that they're proving to you that the direction the market is going in is legitimate, right? Or I guess true. I I, I got to stop using the word legitimate. You know, I think I think I'm just uh, I'm just impeached out uh, for the for, you know for the weekend. But I think it's just whether it's true or false. That's really kind of the uh, the structure that we want to do, right? Um, is anybody? By the way, do you guys hearing any of the noise? Because I'm not sure if uh, if my thing is is broadcasting in the uh, from uh, the thing. So, did you anybody hear the euro dollar sell reversal when uh, sell reversal signal, or did anybody hear the uh, the audible? Nope. Okay, so I guess it's it's not working. It's it's only in Zoom that I can enable my audibles for you guys to hear. 
So tomorrow when we do Zooms, you guys will hear all the audibles. We may even be able to, uh, I'll see, I may even have the, the, the beta tomorrow for, for, that, for that combined audible. But it's definitely going to be coming very, very soon. Um, in the meantime, your dollar, your dollar is a oh, in a sell. This your dollar is a sell. It, I mean, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. But you know what the hell? Let's try this. So your dollar is a sell on this move because this is a buy, false buy in a sense that it's a lower buy. We have a sell arrow. Oh no, I'm actually it's not even a sell. I'm, gosh, I'm 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 being instinctive here. I need this thing to close. So if this thing closes, it needs to close below this area. This didn't really close. So I'm just kind of cheated, like sort of cheating on this trade, but fine. Let's let this play out. Because, it, you know, we didn't close uh, below the lows of this candle, right? So we should actually, let's just take the two points here and watch this trade. And like if this trade actually closes at these levels, then it would be a legitimate sell signal. So I'll take two, and then we're just going to watch this right now. This is really the only legitimate legitimate trade right now that's uh, that's coming up, or the only. Cause so what you're seeing here is a false uptrend, which means we want to look at sell signals, and we have a sell signal that's getting confirmed by price action. Okay, so I'm short here. So now. You know, 50, I'm looking for 45. Can I make 45? That's really my, you know, my, my look here. Um, you know, that's really where we're at right now. Um, and it, it, should, it should more or less trade with the overall risk off sentiment, right? It's clear that obviously we've had a lot of the risk off kind of done in Europe, so we may be stabilizing and this may be um, one of those uh, trades that may not necessarily work because it's already kind of late in the cycle, but it's still within, still within very much the the context structure that that uh the uptrend here is a false uptrend you really have to require quite a lot of short covering risk on flows to reverse this uptrend in the meantime oh 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 damn it dow dow I've been, I've been eyeing this thing now i missed it uh oh, damn all right let me let's just give this uh do i want to trade this let me i'm going to try this i'm trying the dow uh which probably is going to hopefully is going to work did that work did that work like right away? What happened here? Let me try one more time. I don't know what happened here on my Dow. Okay, I'm gonna leave it Dow, Dow as is. I guess it looks like it's gonna work again. Hopefully it's gonna work, let's see. That work? I guess it worked. I guess it worked again. Yeah. So why does Dow why does this Dow trade work um, very well? And this is this actually we we, we can we can certainly count this because that is very much within within our setup. Um, even though I'm late and I and I really you know uh, uh, kind of got lucky a little bit on this on this late follow through. What is the Dow setup? Remember I said to you this is a false uptrend. We had a sell signal over here. The sell signal here got confirmed by this candle over here, right? So coming in to sell over here, we certainly had this, this, this had quite a lot of down, you know, uh, like about how much close was this? This was closed at 05 and the low over here was 88. So it was like a 15 point low. So we missed this low. I came in for the second low. I got the second low. Now, of course, it's, you know, it's starting to reverse itself out um, and the opportunity is lost. There are kind of three key components to making a good trade and making sure that you don't, you don't get stuffed on a bad trade. The, the three components are context of trend. So is trend real or false? So in this case, it's a false trend. Um, arrow signal, kind of confirmation. That's, you know, so trend, context, um, reference point confirmation. And then the third, which is, I think, utterly un unappreciated is, um, the the shortness of your take profit you because you if you're trading on a one minute chart you want to take tiny little opportunities sometimes you're going to get huge opportunities and you know and for those of you who like to trade with a two exit structure you can certainly do that but the point being is this is a trade 
It's a scalp trade. It's good for five on Dow, five on, uh, uh, you know, or actually it's, it's good for 10 on Dow, but in this case we took five because, because it was so late. A uh, five on NASDAQ, five on, um, five on uh, Euro and pounds, all those things. And so um, therefore, uh, you know, you take what you can get, you, you stay humble in your, in your profits and um, you, you time your entry perfectly. You stay humble in your profits. That's how you make. That's how you make consistent profits. That's really kind of the essence of what I wanted to show you, right? So, the one thing I, I the one thing that you know that sort of you know helped me is just by being staying humble and just not trying to press my profits. Now, the euro over here is that was actually very. We had it's pretty close move here. I think the the euro was like uh, how many moves? 47. It was like, you know, it was, it was two points away from our take profit. I'm going to let this thing, you know, obviously we're going to let it float a little bit just to watch it. Um, um, huh. Okay. Um, so what else can I tell you? Let's just take a look at what, if there's anything on the NASDAQ, anything else going on here? No, so NASDAQ's just trying to make a little bit of a turn. Dow is uh, making a turn. German, where is German? So German, this is interesting. So German is in what I call a false uptrend, right? Because the uptrend now is off of a clearly a much, much lower crossover, right? So the German here is what we like to do, and we, we can we can do this on the German here, is the failure of this of this buy signal would be a great sell signal for us. So we want to sell against this level. Let's see if I can set this up. And we want to sell against this level over here. So if this thing fails, in other words, the candle closes below the low of this of this buy candle. That would be a clean, clear, legitimate sell signal in our structure. Uh, but with the German, you know, it could take forever for it to, for this thing to uh, to work itself out. So we'll watch that a little bit. The euro is doing nothing. Um, any questions, guys? Let let me uh, let me bring it back to you guys. Any questions to you? Okay. Anybody have any questions? Oh, you know what I wanted to add to show you, by the way. Um, you know, it's not what we trade, but this is so interesting. Let's like this is this is a great time for us to. To kind of let's uh, let's look at this for one sec. Let me just minimize all this crap, all my stuff. Okay, let's go. Let's go to to Trading View because I wanted to show you a couple of things, right? So I don't know if you guys follow me on Twitter. Obviously, you know I I, I was three days ago. I said I said in Bitcoin at forty was a sell, right? Um, it doesn't matter what I say because I'm never going to trade it because I, I can't, I can't, I can't get access to Bitcoin at all. Um, it, the the margins on the U.S. side are they don't even allow you to trade. Like they just blew out because it's so volatile. They stopped all futures trading for re like like they put margins up to, at 100. percent So you have to put 100 thousand dollars to trade Bitcoin right now. So it's just impossible to trade it. But anyways, um, what I was going to say is what's interesting is is so here's Biddy biddy on, on on our structure like kind of analyzing you know analyzing biddy on our way which is false you know false uptrend the break of the cells over here makes easy a uh, true downtrend the break of the cells the breaker buys makes it all super easy to trade right but what's more interesting to me is to take a look at uh tesla because i think tesla is the next bitcoin in a sense of correction it's got, there's just a lot of, there's, there's a lot of uh, bad stuff. See, and Tesla, Tesla is 
obviously gapping down, right? Took a, took a massive like 40% gap down. I actually like right now, I would just literally sell Tesla right here just for fun. If I, you know, if I was, um, if I was trading this um, uh, in account um, and it's, and, you know, like let's say we're short 30s or 29s over here, it's gone, it's gone at 25. There's zero doubt in my mind. This thing is just going to crash right now because it broke, it broke fresh lows and it broke our sell, um, our sell bottoms over here. So, uh, you know, I think it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a great looking sell. The, the better sell, I mean, or the earlier sell signal was maybe over here. The volatility here is just massive. So you got to give yourself, uh, give yourself some, some time. But it's, it's kind of like Tesla right now, you have to trade with a, with a $5 target um, and $40, uh, $20 stop in, in order to survive the vol. And actually, if you took the 30, this actually just, I think, almost hit 25, maybe 26. No, I was, I was a little bit wrong. It's going to hit 25. Um, I have no doubt. This thing is going down to like probably, uh, in my opinion, 600 by the end of this week um, as, uh, as, as, as all the fluff comes out of this thing. Um, but, uh, you know, it's really, really uh, interesting. When you see one bubble burst, the second one is certainly, you know, certainly on its way. Um, Tesla was the easiest layup sell of the day today. Just literally the easiest layup sell of the day. But my point is that with our structure, we don't have to guess. We can we can actually use our technical um, components to just sort of like to uh, to you know construct entry points off of off of our fundamental view, which kind of makes it uh, really, really interesting. So that's what I was going to say to you on that. Where am I on this things? Uh, still putzing around on the euro. Not really much. The German is actually, the German now is, is so here's what happens. So the German press, you know, printed a higher reference point for us to short, right? So if we get, so now if we get a failure on here, and I'm actually going to just extend this for like another uh, we'll make it like eight periods long. So if this breaks down, you know, to the downside on here, then I want to be inside, you know, in that trade. Uh, but for now, you know, for now the German just keeps climbing up uh, with very little flow. Um, what else is on there? the pound? It's crashing a little bit. I mean, it's it's all very much a um, it's all very much a. Oh, I I I know where I was looking at. So this is this is interesting. I was looking at um i was looking at the um at the canada trade so this is this is really really cool before before when kathy was talking i was looking at the canada trade right so canada trade is a clear false uptrend even though it's this really big big uptrend here it's off of a lower cross it's a false uptrend so i am looking for short opportunities now beautiful thing about our system is that the short opportunities um don't put us into idiotic trades. So my short opportunity here would be to sell the lows. I don't get to sell the lows. It verticalizes. Great. No harm, no foul. I'm still looking for short opportunities. Short opportunities here means that I don't take the trade until I, until this trade over here. I think this is a trade that breaks the low over here. So I'm short over here at the 27, right? I obviously always have to give myself lots of room for error. So if I'm giving, if I'm giving myself 20 for error, this is only goes about eight nine against me, and then it drops right over here down to um, to twenty. So plus five, super easy. If I want to press it again, I can try to sell this short over here, um, and uh, you know it, it it again you know comes in um, uh, as a as a beautiful trade, right? So um, you can analyze these things in so many different ways, uh, and even when you have a vicious move against you. You generally are not put into a trade until that vicious move exhausts itself and the true trend, the true trend, um, um, verticalizes itself. I'm gonna just take this 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 euro at three and just get it done with. So at least you know. So we we took um, five on the Dow, three on the euro. That's that's the only um, legitimate trades I had. Even though we made money on the Nasdaq and, and a couple of other things, I'm, I'm not counting those. But I'll count those as just a just a you know, a little bit of a soup song, a little bit of an appetizer for for, uh, for Monday open. The German so far doesn't seem to be cooperating, so I don't have any signals. Although it may, it may, it may trigger off this thing. We'll see. Um, that might be like the only other thing that we have. Nasdaq is just just in when we have the one thing that that is frustrating about our strategy 
um, but you have to accept it. You really have to accept that you can't you can't fight it. Is that in a one way trend market where the market is just super one way, we're only gonna we're only going to uh, make money off of the first move, right? Unless unless you want you know, unless you kind of change the rules and say I'm gonna I'm gonna trade every move of this thing. But that's you know that's not we the, the highest probability trade is off the first move, and then we just have to kind of wait because you know all that profit. On the one-way trade, we're just not participating. But we're, you know, the beautiful thing is, not we're not only we're not participating, we're not being stupid and trying to find a bottom. Because the one thing, the one thing that our strategy tells us is that this is no way, in no way, shape, or form, a um, a uh, bottom fishing exercise according to our structure. And that's you know much more valuable than uh, than anything else. Um, yes, yeah, so I did. Well, I just did. Why? But I just did. I just adjusted the sell order. Did you see the? Did you see the? Did you not, did you not see me in the uh, in the webinar? I just adjusted the sell order to the to the downside. Uh, where's this thing? Where's the where's the German? Yeah, I just adjusted it. It went from here to here, right? Still kind of putzing around, still doing anything. I kind of honestly, I hate trading the German. It's the, it's it's so slow and so uh, tedious. But you know, it's a legitimate trade. Um, if it if it triggers and it's got to really trigger, it's got to break through the slows um, and then just kind of move around. In the meantime, um, in the meantime, actually, I think the euro, the euro fully took the five. The full the euro fully gave us five. We were looking we're looking for like what forty. We got short in like forty ones. I don't know. If, did anybody take the euro? Um, I took it at plus three because I was just not paying attention. But what about um, anybody make the full five in the euro? Oh, okay. All right, no problem. You, I'm glad you got it. Uh, uh, anybody take the Cheryl, Connie? Anybody take the euro to the downside? Because that was a clean five, and that you know that was that was perfectly workable. Karen, Karen. Two. Eh, all right. Hey, eh, yeah, two is better than nothing, right? Um. So, um, so basically, that's kind of you know that's where we're at, guys. Um, good for you, Wyvin. Good for you. you. You took five. Very nice. I, you know, honestly, as I said to you, once, once we, you know, the, the 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 contextual indicator is ready, we can unleash it on 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 a whole bunch of uh, uh, currency pairs. You know, we can certainly, first of all, we can certainly expand to the Canadian um, in a nice, clean way. And so we could have we will have we'll have Euro pound Canadian to trade during the North American session. Um, and, uh, um, you know, and then, you know, then, then we can start looking for, you know, for, for other ideas. But, you know, let me uh, oh, my what's my other thing? I wanted to look at uh, where's the uh, I was just curious where Tesla was. This this Tesla coming back up or is this piece of crap getting itself? Oh, there we go. There we go. So was, was I not right? Was this not such a great call, guys? Just just for fun, just for shits and giggles. Did I not say this 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 POS is going to go down to um, eight twenty five or lower? Such an easy easy sell. Um, but you know, it only becomes an easy sell after you after you've had thousands thousands of failed um, trades in, in doing the wrong sells, right? It only becomes an easy sell when you understand when and how and why things fail, right? Um, the beautiful thing about, about the strategy is that we only short when it's true, not when it's false, or we only go long when it's true. In other words, we are, we're in trend with the market when it's a true, true signal, right? Um, and that's the beauty of, of what we're doing right now. So I'm very, very excited. I, I, I knew that all this stuff is is totally workable on a variety of instruments, um, uh, and you know the next game plan is going to be to kind of push it on, on on a much longer, wider time frames. But you know you can see how during the day, if you just employ this methodology across a million different instruments, there are a hundred opportunities a day because this is a very selective tool and only selects the best opportunities across multiple stuff. So. Um, it's going to be very, very useful as we as we continue trading uh, going forward. Um, so that's it.
I'm counting my my Tesla as just a shits and giggles trade for the day because that was like that was a nice clean five points in Tesla without without even even sweating. Um, all right, very good guys. Thank you. I'm glad I'm glad we got made a little bit of money today on on Monday. Uh, it was really much more of a review session. Um, I got a lot of just uh, logistical stuff that I really want to clean up. As I said, I will be um, working on all the videos for everybody to to make sure that everybody's got everything installed properly. Uh, Valtteri, are you are you in the webinar with me? Um, do you hear me? Okay, I don't know if he's uh, if he's in the webinar. Um, I'll deal with him later. Wow, oh, Euro is really crunching now. Good for us. Um, thank you guys. Thank you very much, ladies. I will see everybody tomorrow. I'll, I'll have the new Zoom settings uh, before the end of the day. And with Zoom tomorrow, we're obviously going to have all the audibles in the room, so you guys are going to be able to, to hear the audibles, which is really the critical thing here. Um, that's I, that's I think uh, for those if you, those of you guys who are trading with the audibles, um, I think it's just it just completely changes the uh, the edge so much more towards uh, you know towards towards profitable uh, trades because it, it alerts us so much better. Don't you agree, guys? I mean, I, I don't know if you guys are trading with the audibles, but but for those of you that are, I just feel it's a huge uh, human edge um, by having the computer, um, you know, alert us. Audibles are um, non-platform. In other words, the WAV files that I, the WAV folder that you have in there, is fully compatible. Just drop it, in, just drop it into the MT5 WAV folder. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna create the. Uh, the, the videos. In other words, the audibles are the same. They, the, the wave files work in five as well as in four. You just have, all you have to do is just simply call on them. You have to configure them so they're called inside the the, uh, the template. Um, and I'm going to try and I'm, I'm going to make the template. The reason why I haven't, the problem is, I would have to make three. You know, I have to rewrite the templates all the time, so I've sort of held off on writing the templates. But I've provided the audible files, so you can write your own templates if you want um, uh, in the uh, in the thing. I'm just waiting for Daniel to consolidate the eight alerts into four alerts. Once we have the, the four alert final configuration, then I'll have the um, the final audibles, and um, and then I will uh, uh, you know create the final templates. So we'll have we'll have like four and four. It'll be really really good, and I'll be set. All right, thank you, ladies. Thank you, gentlemen. Everybody have a great day. Um, I will have everything um, on Zoom and everything else a little bit later. I'll see you guys. Um, I'll see you guys later. Take care.